first flight textbook in english for class 10 i am explaining the seventh chapter glimpses of india first part of it is a baker from goa by lucio rodrig before you read it is given many kinds of images we get of different fellows because many people belong to different regions yes now the chapter goes like this This is a pen portrait of a traditional Goan village baker who still has an important place in his society. So this chapter is devoted to one baker because baker still plays very important part in Goa. Our elders are often heard reminiscing nostalgically about those good old Portuguese days, the Portuguese and their famous loaves of bread. means we must have heard from our elders that they are every time recalling their past days with great love how they used to use the bread in their past days and about portuguese days when portuguese were there in goa and their famous loaves means pieces of bread those eaters of loaves might have vanished means people may have disappeared they are no more here but the makers are still here but the bread are made here we still have among us us the mixers the molders and those who bake the loaves means everything is here only the portuguese are no more in goa means we have mixer the molders and who bake the loaves those age old time tested furnaces still exist means there are fire places too the fire in the furnaces has not yet been extinguished means fire is there the spark is perfect the third and jingle of the traditional baker is bambo heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places means when one baker comes in the street he just gives nice voice of placing his special stack that is made of bamboo heralding because he announces his coming in the morning maybe the father is not alive but the son still carries on the family profession means same profession that is selling bread loaves of bread is here maybe by next generation these bakers are even today known as pedder in goa and these bakers are called pedder during our childhood in goa means the author is just recalling he is saying that in his childhood in goa the baker used to be his friend companion and guide means nice friend and he used to guide their ways also he used to come at least twice a day once when he set out in the morning on his selling round and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket means in the morning when his basket used to be full with breads and in the evening when he was just having some breads or his basket may be empty the jingling third of his bamboo woke us up from our sleep and we ran to meet and greet him means our wake up used to be with the nice voice jingling means nice voice of the third placing of his bamboo Yes, and they used to run to meet the baker and welcome him. Why was it so? The reason is given. Reason is given. How they loved the baker was it for the love of the loaf? It was not only for the piece of bread. No, the loaves were brought by some pescine or bestine, the maid servant of the house. Means these can be bought by any fellow. But we longed for. were those bread bangles which we chose carefully but they used to run outside because they wanted to take bread bangles bangles stands for rings of bangles sometimes it was sweet bread of special make sometimes it used to be sweet also the baker made his musical entry on the scene with the jhang jhang sound of his specially made bamboo staff means he used to rest with his things and noise used to be very particular that was chang chang his one hand used to support the basket on his head and the other banged the bamboo 
on the ground means he used to place his total material on the ground that was made of bamboo he would greet the lady of the house with good morning he was so sophisticated he used to say good morning then place his basket on the vertical vertical bamboo then the basket used to be placed on vertical bamboo means stand that is made up of bamboo we kids would be pushed aside with a mild rebuke because the kids used to be naughty that's why they used to be pushed by the elders with little scolding and the loaves would be delivered to the servant and loaves would be given to servant but we would not give up but the children would never leave their naughtiness we would climb a bench on or the parapet and peep into the basket because they were really eager to check the bread bangles the sweet bread here or there that's why they used to climb a bench or wall small wall and peep into the basket i can still recall means the narrator can remember the typical nice fragrance that is nice smell of those bread pieces loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children big pieces were for the elders and rings were made for the children then we did not even care to brush our teeth then they were not bothered to clean their teeth properly or wash their mouths nicely why should we yes now question is very funny he is just saying the author is saying why we should be bothered at that age level we were so careless we were so naughty who would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the toothbrush because toothbrush used to be like with the mango leaf and why was it necessary at all means they were not really awake about the cleaning of their teeth they didn't understand the necessity of brushing their teeth properly why because the tiger never brushed his teeth means he is just making fun he is giving funny reference that tiger never brushes his teeth hot tea could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all and then next idea also given that they used to take hot tea afterwards it can clean up everything that's why they were not bothered about the cleanliness of their teeth yes now oral comprehension check first question what are the elders in goa nostalgic about is yes, the elders in goa are nostalgic about the loaves of bread they used to recall how a baker used to come twice in their street with their breads and they were very very eager to get those breads and they were not only interested in bread but they were interested in welcoming the baker too now second question is bread making still popular in goa how do you know yes bread making is still popular in goa because the author has given himself a clue if father is not alive then son is doing this professional professional business and second idea is also given that the portuguese have gone who invented the loaves of bread but the makers molders and the bakers of bread are still there furnaces are there because fire has not been extinguished till now next question what is the baker called the baker is called padder in goa this is a specially given name to him now fourth question when would the baker come every day why did the children run to meet him the baker would come every day in the morning and in the evening in the morning he used to come with his basket filled with breads but in the evening his basket used to be mostly empty the children never ran to meet him only not to greet him but they were interested in just getting their bread bangles besides meeting and greeting him marriage gifts are meaningless now the author is saying that marriages are never completed without the sweet bread known as bowl just as a party or a feast feast means also simple party loses its charm without bread means not even a single party 
or occasion is celebrated without bread. Not enough can be said to show how important a baker can be for a village. And it is very important to know that a baker every time plays a very important role in Goa, in any village. The lady of the house must prepare sandwiches on the occasion of her daughter's engagement because daughter's engagement will never be celebrated without sandwiches. Cakes and bowling hands are a must for Christmas as well as other festivals. So cakes and bowling hands are very special for Christmas. Thus the presence of baker's furnace in the village is absolutely essential. Then the author is saying, Baker's furnace plays very important or totally must role in Goan villages. The baker or bread seller of those days had a peculiar dress known as kabai. Yes, in olden days, special dress was worn by a baker and it was called kabai. It was a single piece, long frock reaching down to the knees. It was just one long frock coming to the knees. But in his childhood, the author could see bakers wearing a shirt or trousers which were shorter than full length ones and longer than half pants, means three fourths pant like. Even today, anyone who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees, he can get easily one comment that he may be a pedal. The baker usually collected his bills at the end of the month. Then the narrator is telling how the baker used to be paid by them. He used to get his money at the end of month. Monthly accounts used to be recorded on some wall in pencil and records used to be written on wall. Baking was really a profitable profession in old days. In olden days, it was really lucrative business. It was really profitable business. The baker and his family never starved. Means the baker and his family were not in condition to die because of hunger. They used to be well off. He, his family, his servants always looked happy and prosperous. And the family of baker used to be very happy and well. Their plump physique was an open testimony to this. Plump stands for fat body that used to give one clear indication. Testimony means indication or proof that they used to be very happy and prosperous. Rich fellows. Even today, any person with a jackfruit-like physical appearance is easily compared to a baker. Yes, now one uh, fun is given by this quotation. Even today, if one person has a special fat belly, then he can be called a baker easily. Now, oral comprehension check. Match the following. What is a must? As marriage gift, you can tick sweet bread called bowl. Second, for a party or a feast, that can be bread. Then, third question, for a daughter's engagement, that can be sandwiches. Then for four, Christmas, cakes and bowling house. Now, second question. What did the bakers wear? In Portuguese days, they used to wear one special dress. That was a single piece long frock reaching down to the knees and it used to be called kabai. But when the author was long, he could easily watch bakers every time used to wear a shirt and trousers which were shorter than full length ones and longer than half pants. So it was somewhat different from the Portuguese days. Who invites third question? Who invites the comment? He is dressed like a peddler. If by chance till today one person who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees, can invite the comment that he is dressed like a pedal. Now, fourth question. Where were the monthly accounts of the baker recorded? Yes, the baker used to get every time his bills at the end of the month. And it is really memorable thing that the monthly accounts every time used to be recorded 
on some wall and just in pencil now next question what does a jackfruit like appearance mean a jackfruit like appearance mean who has fat body and can be called pleasantly looking but gives one idea that he belongs to a rich or prosperous family now textual questions which of these statements are correct yes the peddler was an important person in the village in olden times yes it is right next peddler still exist in goan villages yes second is right third the peddlers went away with the portuguese no cross the third option now fourth one the peddlers continue to wear a single piece long frock uh no it is somewhat different its length has been changed now fifth bread and cakes were an integral part of goan life in the olden days yes now sixth traditional bread making is still a very profitable business yes now peddlers and their families starve in the present times no it is wrong now second question is bread an important part of goan life how do you know this yes bread is an important part of goan life we know this very clearly because in olden times or in portuguese times it may be of very very importance but till today goan like the breads cakes and other sweet breads so we can say they are fond of bread till today it is used on every occasion special occasion is christmas and it can never be celebrated without cakes now next pick the right answer what is the tone of the author when he says the following now first question it is given the third and jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo can still be heard in some places so we can say the tone of the author is nostalgic because he is recalling the past life how people used to be fond of bread now next one maybe the father is not alive but the son still carries on the family profession yes we can say the author is hopeful hopeful means he feels that the business may be continued third question i still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves means he is nostalgic he is just recalling the olden days now fourth question the tiger never brushed his teeth what he could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all yes he is funny here he makes fun of his own excuses now fourth question cakes and bolinas are a must for christmas as well as other festivals yes it is matter of fact means the author is telling what is a fact till today now sixth question the baker and his family never starved they always looked happy and prosperous yes he is really speaking the truth so this is again a matter of fact first flight textbook in english for class 10 i am explaining the chapter cool that is in the 7th unit second part written by lokesh abro cool is a coffee country famous for its rain forests and spices is it is about coffee and special spices Midway between Mysore and the coastal town of Mangalore sits a piece of heaven that must have drifted from the kingdom of God. Is yes, the author says that it is in between Mysore and coastal town of Mangalore. It is like one heaven because it appears that it has been taken from the special kingdom of God. Means it has heavenly qualities. this land of rolling hills is inhabited by a proud race of martial men beautiful women and wild creatures this land is just inhabited means people of special race who are very brave and the women 
who are very beautiful and this place is famous for wild animals poor second name is kudugu the smallest district of karnataka is home to evergreen rainforest spices and coffee plantations evergreen rainforest spices cover 30% of this district during the monsoons it pours enough to keep many visitors away means during the rainy season many visitors cannot come here it becomes hindrance time for them the season of joy starts from september and it continues till march the weather is perfect with some showers thrown in for good measures sometimes there is little bit showers the air breathes of invigorating coffee every time there is special fragrance of coffee that gives special energy to this place coffee estates and colonial bungalows stand tucked under tree canopies in prime corners we can watch nice bungalows that are under the shelter of special trees in special corners the fiercely independent people of purga are possibly of greek or arabic descent means the people are completely independent they belong to arab because according to one story a part of alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled here when return became impractical is according to story alexander's army fellows some lived here when their returning was not possible for them these people married among us the locals and their culture is quite clear in the martial traditions marriage and religious rituals which are totally different from the hindu main stream the theory of arab origin draw support from the long black coat is it is given we can really relate because their dress is long black coat that is embroidered waist belt worn by kodugus known as kufia it resembles the kufia worn by the arabs and kurds means the dress that is worn by the people living in kur it resembles it matches the dress that is usually worn by the arabs and kurds one relation is given accordingly kurgi homes have a special tradition of hospitality means they enjoy to serve others there is a special tradition and they are more than willing to recount numerous tales of valor related to their sons and fathers and every time they want to tell many stories of bravery that is associated with their sons and fathers the kurg regiment is one of the most decorated in the indian army this is one special fact and the first chief of the indian army general karyappa was a kurgi one more fact is given even till today koduvus are the only people in india who are allowed to carry their fire arms without any license so one special proof is also given of their special skill the river kaveri obtains its water from the hills and forests of kur so it is very important because kaveri gets its water from here mahasir that is name of a large fresh water fish abound in these waters means this fish can be large numbers here king fishers dive for their catch that's why king fishers are every time ready to have their hunt while squirrels langurs drop partially eaten fruit for the mischief of enjoying the splash and ripple effect in the clear water means we can watch different squirrels langurs who go on eating special food fruit are actually half eaten half thrown here or there because they want to enjoy the special splash in this clear water then they get enjoyment after checking the rippling effect elephants can be seen enjoying having their special bath and they get special scrubbing from their bathhouses in this river water comes from the forest of kur 
the most laid back individuals become converts to the life of high energy adventure with river rafting canoeing rappling rock climbing and mountain biking means the people who are relaxed they enjoy many adventure activities like many names are given first it is rafting then rappling canoeing rock climbing and mountain biking numerous walking trails in this region are a favorite with trekkers means trekkers can enjoy because there are specially maintained paths only for walking birds bees butterflies are there to give you company means we can watch so many creatures especially birds bees butterflies they are every time there to make our life lively macaws malabar squirrels langurs and slender lorels means soft lorels keep a watchful eye from the tree canopy means many creatures can watch us from the special shelters of trees i do pre- however prefer to step aside for wild elephants the author is saying that he prefers to step on one side because wild any elef- elephants can meet us any time so we have to be careful there the climb to the brahmagiri hills brings you a panoramic view of the entire misty landscape of kur is if we climb special hills of brahmagiri then we can get a special view of that area and it can be totally misty landscape we can enjoy the scene a walk across the rope bridge leads to the 64 acre island of nisara gadhama running into the buddhist monks from india's largest tibetan settlement means we can watch special settlement that is india's largest tibetan settlement at nearby bai lekopu is a bonus means it can be a special attraction if we go there the monks in red ochre and yellow robes are among us the many surprises that will to be discovered by visitors searching for the heart and soul of india right here in kur then special one more attraction is given we can watch the monks who are wearing red orange and yellow colored dresses and they can <coughs> be surprised because they are every time in search for the heart and soul of india they are visitors we can watch them only in the special calm place now textual question first where is kur yes kur is between mysore and the coastal town of mangalore and it is like a heaven that appears to be drifted from the kingdom of god and it is every time inhabited by a proud race of martial men beautiful women and wild creatures it is the smallest district of karnataka second question what is the story about the koduvu people's descent yes one story tells that once a part of alexander army moved south along the coast and settled there because their returning to their country became impossible then they married among the locals because their culture is quite clear in religious rites till this time and they wear special long black coat that is called kufiya it really resembles the kufiya worn by the arabs and kurds so we are sure that they are descendants of arabs or kurds now third question what are some of the things you now know about the people of kur yes the people of kur are mostly descendants of the arabs and kurds they are really known for their valor they have 
beautiful women and wild creatures can be seen here next one the main crop of coal uh, is spices coffee plantation and it is a home to evergreen rain forests now third question the sports it offers to tourists yes the tourists can enjoy many adventurous sports like river rafting canoeing rappling rock climbing and mountain biking and it gives a special chance to the trekkers to have special walking trails in the special region fourth question the animals you are likely to see in kor we can enjoy to watch many animals first it is given there can be seen many squirrels langurs then wild elephants may be seen enjoying their bath and being scrubbed by their mahouts then we can watch special mahasir a large fresh water fish that are abundant here with this we can enjoy the special scene of flying birds kingfishers then different bees butterflies and other animals like macaws malabar squirrels langurs they every time can be seen of with watchful eye from the tree canopy here or there next last one fifth question its distance from bangalore and how to get there yes its distance from bangalore is about 250 to 260 km and uh, there can be many ways to go there yes first we can reach by air then by rail it is possible then by road to by air there are many airports then by rail there are many rail hubs at mysore bangalore and hassan and by road there are two routes first is from mysore and second is from neela mangal now fourth question here are six sentences with some words in italics find phrases from the text that have the same meaning look in the paragraphs indicated yes these are important phrasal verbs special phrases are given first during monsoons it rains so heavily that tourists do not visit so it is given in paragraph 2 During the monsoons, it pours enough to keep many visitors away. So answer is to keep away. Next, some people say that Alexander's army moved south along the coast and settled there. So in italics, some people say. So answer is as one story goes. Next, the coast people are always ready to tell stories of their sons and fathers. Weller. So in italics, it is are always ready to tell stories. So answer is are more than willing to recount numerous tales of Weller. Now next, even people who normally lead an easy and slow life get smitten by the high energy adventure sports of Kur. so in italics the people who normally lead an easy and slow life gets smitten so answer is the most laid back individuals next the theory of the arab origin is supported by the long coat with embroidered waist belt they wear yes now answer of this is the in italics is supported by so answer is the theory of arab origin draws support draws support is special phrase for this next is sixth one macaws malabar squirrels observe you carefully from the tree canopy that is in paragraph 7 answer is for italics observe you carefully 
keep a watchful eye. First flight textbook in English for class 10. I am explaining the third chapter, Tea from Assam by Arup Kumar Dutta. It is from the seventh unit, third part. Yes, tea from Assam. Pranjol, a youngster from Assam, is Rajbir's classmate at school in Delhi. Yes, it is one fact given. From this, we can understand how we visit one place and what we can learn there. Pranjol, one youngster, he invites his friend. They are in summer vacation. Actually, his father is the manager of a tea garden in Upper Assam. So, how his friend enjoys his visit. And what does he learn there? We are reading just one fact from one incident. Yes, the story goes like this. Chai Garam, Garam Chai, a vendor called out in a high-pitched voice. Means one vendor, one hawker was saying Garam Chai, Chai Garam. And he was saying loudly to this. He came up to their window and asked Chai Sahab, means he wanted to ask whether they want chai. Give us two cups, Pranjal said. Then Pranjal's answer was yes, they want, wanted two cups. They sipped the steaming hot liquid. They started enjoying their hot tea. Almost everyone in their compartment was drinking tea too. At that time, everyone was enjoying that drink. Do you know that over 80 crore cups of tea are drunk every day throughout the world? Rajveer said. Rajveer started saying that how many cups means he was totally surprised to say like this that over 80 crore cups of tea are drunk every day throughout the world. Who exclaimed Pranzal. Pranzal started saying with surprise, oh, tea really is very popular. Means he is very popular everywhere. Then the train pulled out of the station. It means the train reached at the destination. Pranzal buried his nose in his detective book again. Miss Pranzal was just busy in reading his book. Rajvir too was an ardent fan of detective stories. Rajvir was also one passionate fan of detective stories. But at the moment, he was keener on looking at the beautiful scenery. But at that time, his total attention was to look outside. He was very curious to know about tea and tea gardens. It was green, green everywhere. Rajvir had never seen so much greenery before because he was new one to that place. That's why he was enjoying. He had never seen light wise greenery earlier. Then the soft green paddy fields gave way to tree bushes. Then he checked that soft green paddy fields were giving way means then they were able to wash tea bushes. It was a magnificent view. It was marvelous scene for him. Against the backdrop of densely wooded hills, a sea of tea bushes stretched as far as the eye could see. Means wherever he could watch, he could see only big, vast expansion areas of tea bushes here or there. And backdrop was highly thick wooded hills. Dwarfing the tiny tea plants were tall, sturdy shade trees and it is the orderly rows of bushes busily moved doll like figures. Then he started thinking that tiny tea plants were made dwarf, were made very, very small because in the backdrop there were very tall, sturdy, solid shade trees and among them orderly rows of bushes busily moving like doll. Means he started thinking that tree plants were very very small and they were protected by shaded trees at that time. He was totally surprised to check this view. In the distance was an <coughs> ugly building with smoke billowing out of tall chimneys. Then he started checking that there was ugly building also. It was just supposed to watch that there was one unpleasant building to look at because smoke was coming out of tall chimneys. Hey, a tea garden, Rajvir cried excitedly. 
he started saying yes this is the tea garden person who had been born and brought up on a plant on a plantation didn't share rajiv's excitement the idea is given because pranjal was not new to that place and he was just born there he was brought up there that's why he was not as excited as his friend oh this is a tea country now he said he started explaining in a casual manner because it is tea country that's why you are watching this and then assam has the largest concentration of plantation in the world and he started telling him fact that assam has the largest areas of plantation in the total world you will see enough gardens to last you a lifetime means you can watch so many gardens here that you can never forget in your lifetime you will be amazed yes then rajiv started saying he had been reading as much as he could about tea means he claimed that he had read a lot no one really knows who discovered tea but there are many legends he started sharing his thoughts but still this time we cannot claim who discovered tea because there are so many stories myths about that what legends his friend started asking and he started sharing okay listen there is the one about the chinese emperor who always boiled water before drinking it he started saying that one chinese emperor one king who every time boiled water before drinking one day a few leaves of twigs burning under the pot fell into the water giving it a delicious flavor by chance some leaves from small branches they fell into the water then nice flavor was there it is said that they were by chance few leaves that were fell into the boiling water tell me another scoff to pranjal pranjal started laughing and he said okay tell me another story then second story was told by him we have an indian legend to be started saying there is one indian story too bodhi dharma an ancient buddhist ascetic ascetic stands for monk cut off his eyelids because he felt sleepy during meditations means one monk who was uh, really short in his meditation that's why he cut off his eyelids because he used to feel sleepy during his special meditation during his thought then tea plants grew out of eyelids then tea plants started growing out of his eyelids the leaves of these plants when put in hot water and drunk vanish sleep that's why when we drink tea it is associated that we can avoid our sleep for a long time then rajveer started saying he was first drunk in china as far back as 2700 bc before christ in fact words such as tea chai chini are from chinese he started just relating these ideas he came to europe only in the 16th century and was drunk more as medicine than as beverage he started saying earlier he was taken as one medicine because of its medicinal profits it was not drunk as a liquid at that time the train clattered into mariani junction then the train just stopped it started just stopping into one junction that is mariani junction the boys collected their luggage and pushed their way to the crowded platform then they started making their way pranjal's parents were waiting for them pranjal's father was there mother was there they were waiting for their arrival soon they were driving towards dekhi bari the tea garden managed by pranjal's father for which his friend was called an hour later the car veered sharply off the main road and by chance after one hour their car started taking sharp turn from the main road they crossed a cattle bridge and entered dekhi a bari tea estate then they entered into a tea estate that was dekhia bari on both sides of the gravel road were acre upon acre of tea bushes everywhere there were tea bushes and the road was made up of gravel that is red colored stone all neatly pruned to the same height means all the bushes were nicely trimmed and they were looking of the same size groups of tea pluckers with bamboo baskets on their backs that is commonly seen one special view 
everywhere here or there that tea pluckers used to carry bamboo baskets on their backs and they wear plastic aprons were plucking the newly sprouted leaves at that time it was a nice scene for them ranjan's father slowed down to allow a tractor pulling a trailer load of tea leaves to pass then his father slowed down because they had to give way to a tractor this is the second flush or sprouting period isn't it mr barua rasveer asked rasveer was taking lot of excitement he was very curious to know that's why he started asking from the father of his friend that is pranjal's father mr barua this is the second sprouting period na yes it lasts from i do it remains from may to july and it gives the best tea at this time you seem to have done your homework before the pain pranjal's father said in surprise means mr barua was surprised he was very happy to announce that rajveer had really done a lot of homework before coming means he knew a lot about the gardens to stay yes mr barua rajveer admitted he claimed yes he knows so many things but he hoped to learn much more while he was there so simple idea is given when we go to any new place we can learn so many things at one go whatever we have read here or there that can that is second hand experience so first hand experience is got by rajveer and he was very happy to learn more and more there